There are so many things you need to consider when you're wanting to learn how to emboss or deboss a full 12 by 12 sheet with your Cricut machine. It will require each element of this process to be close enough to perfect in order to get this right. So make sure to watch the entire video for every tip that I have to share at each stage of the process. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. This method that I'm going to be outlining is only possible using the Maker or the Maker 3 machines. None of the other machines in the Cricut range will be possible to do this method. If you do have another machine and you want to try something similar, let me know in the comments and I will explore other options for you. The first thing that we're going to start off with is the design. Now, when it comes to these kinds of designs, you need to make sure that your design is set up in a certain way so that the majority of your mat is exposed to allow for the piece of paper that you place on top of your debossing stencil is able to stick to it. Now, this design that I've created here is a nice little steampunk type of design, and I created it by taking things out of Cricut Access, welding them together, etc, etc. So this entire project that we're working on will be available on my Cricut Design Space profile. And I will leave a link in the description for you to go and follow me on Cricut Design Space to gain access to pretty much all of the projects that I actually use these videos for, unless there's an uploaded element that I have to use, so that you can follow on and create the exact same project that I do. Now, in order to make the stencil, we need to think about what we want this design to look like. Currently, it's just set to a basic cut result. If this is what we want to have debossed or embossed, I like to use the offset method to get a more crisp deboss. So what we're going to do for this one is I'm then going to cut this out of craft board and I'm going to cut the internal offset. Because I want to have this embossed on the page, I need to use an internal offset for my cut so that we're cutting the piece and then embossing what is outside. So we're actually getting the lines exactly like this. So I'm going to click on the offset feature in the top of the screen and automatically it will be set to an external offset, which we don't want. So I'm going to highlight this number, type in negative, 0.02 and I'm going to click on the little white block somewhere for it to apply. It generally takes a few seconds for the computer to think about it and then it will apply the offset. You'll see a slightly blue line around all of the edges. So what I'm going to do now is click apply. Now it goes completely black. So with this, if we zoom in super, super close, you won't really be able to see very much until you've actually changed the color of the layer or changed the one layer to deboss. So this layer that we've just done the offset on, like I mentioned, that is the layer that we need to cut. So I'm going to click on the original layer because that's the one that we want to deboss. I'm going to click on operation in the top left hand corner and I'm going to click deboss. Now you'll see it just changes it to a single line. And I'm going to change the color of the offset just so that you can get a little bit more of a, a clear view of what we're working with. You will see the yellow is what we're going to cut and the black line is what we're going to deboss. Now you can work on a 0.03 or a 0.02, maybe even a 0.04, somewhere around there. It depends on what kind of a result you want to go for. I want to test out 0.02, so I'm going to use that one. Next up, I want to make sure that everything is going to align on our mat. So I'm going to separate the two layers. I'm going to click on shapes, add in a square and change the size to 29.2. You'll obviously see that it's in the front. So I'm going to right click, send it to the back. Now we don't want to cut the square. We just want to use this so that the two designs are positioned in exactly the same space on the mat. So I'm actually going to change this operation to score. And it's a little hack that I like to use to get things situated in exactly the same space. So I'm going to duplicate this one so that we have the same on either side. I'm going to select both of those layers. So only one square and the deboss layer. Then I'm going to click align, center them, right click and attach. 
So I'm going to do the same for the second section. So I'm going to select both of the layers, align, center, right click and attach. Now we have two pages essentially. So it's not going to do the same thing on the same page, which is a little bit of a, an adaptation to the original method that I've been using as it makes it easier to manage the two different pages. And now we're going to click make it and then continue after we've connected to our machine. When sending this to cut, we need to make sure that our mat selection is correct. So because we're going to be doing the basic cut first and then the deboss afterwards, we need to make sure that we have mat two selected and then we can select the craft board, which is the material that I'm going to be using for this. The next thing you'll need to do is to change your tools and material. We're not gonna be using the scoring wheel, so I need to select edit tools and scoring stylus. It doesn't matter if you don't have a scoring stylus, we're not actually going to use it. This is just to make sure that we maintain the exact same position for both mat one and mat two. This serves as the as part of the hack of adding the 29.2 square scoring border to each of the designs and attaching them so that it all stays in the same place. So the machine will technically score that, but because we don't have anything inserted into the clamp A, it doesn't make a difference, it's not going to do anything. And now for the mat section, and there's a couple tips and tricks there that, that you need to make sure that you are aware of. Now, for this method to work effectively, I find that using a clean new mat is the best way to go. Because you need the smaller parts to stay on the mat, you need to make sure that your mat is as sticky as possible and as new as possible in order for this to work the best. If you are not looking for a very deep emboss, you can use cardstock as it won't give you as crisp a result as craft board because normal cardstock is a lot thinner. So what I would then suggest doing is using the ugliest colors that you have or the colors that you don't use the most is probably a better way of saying it. Now, this is a color that I don't use very often, so I would use this. However, because I want to get a slightly crisper emboss, I'm going to be using the craft board. So we're going to put the craft board on the page. And the next step is to make sure that you bray it on extremely well. So take your brayer and give it a lot of pressure so that it stays on properly. This will also take a very long time to cut as it is pretty much a full 12 by 12 with the exception of one centimeter or so around the edge, just to make sure that when you're putting the next piece of cardstock on top of it, you have at least something for it to grip to. So be prepared to cut for quite a while, especially if you're using craft board as it does a double pass. So it's gonna take twice as long, but it is all worth it in the end. Once you have cut and weeded your entire page, this is something as to what it will look like. Now, this is the page that I have done in Design Space. And as you can see, I left around a centimeter border along the entire image just to make sure that the page has a little bit of something to stick to. Now, of course, if you are lucky enough to have several mats that you can use and you know that you're going to want to reuse this in the future, you can leave this on here and just redo the project every time you want to make another page. So if it is something that you're going to reuse often, it might be worth keeping a mat for each kind of embossing project if that's what you maybe base your livelihood on. You can just put the matte protector back on and you'll be able to take it out later and only deboss it. Great idea. When choosing the paper that you're actually wanting to deboss, the things that you need to be aware of are that if you are choosing a thinner paper, like a lighter GSM paper, think of light cardstock when you're working with, you know, 180 GSM or something like that, you are going to get a crisper, deeper deboss. If you're wanting to use heavier paper like medium cardstock or even a heavy cardstock or a craft board or a watercolor paper or something like that, the result is not going to be as obvious. You will probably still see a little bit of a deboss, but your result is not going to be as bold as what you would get with a thinner paper. So the thinner the paper, the crisper the deboss. You're then going to take your piece of cardstock I like to put the texture side down and have the slightly more matte pay side facing up and you're going to place it onto your mat. Line it up nicely. 
And once again, we're going to use our brayer to make sure that we especially get those corners brayed down correctly. And yes, I have used a pink fabric mat here. It is a very new fabric mat, so it's actually got a very good grip to it as well. I find it to be very similar to the standard grip, so I'm using that. Now, not only do you want to make sure that you bray down the sides, I also give it a little bit of a once over in the middle just to make sure that it's stuck down and that it's evenly distributed and it kind of also starts the debossing process a little bit so it makes your deboss just a little bit nicer but if i'm being honest it's not by much next when loading it into your machine i then kind of have to take a sneak peek into the corner to see which side of the page needs to go into the machine first here has the little cog turny thing technical term and so I know that this needs to be at the bottom because if you look at the design on design space you can see that this section is at the bottom I then just bray that down again just to make sure that I'm getting it all stuck down and then I also like to go one step further and I like to use pieces of washi tape to tape down the edges so that they don't come up because that's when I have the most problems is when it gets to an edge piece and it comes up on the edges. So we tape down every edge and then for good luck I go over those sides on with the brayer again. Now we're going to load this into the machine and let the debossing do its thing. We need to make sure that we're selecting mat one, which has the debossing layer, just like we made sure to select mat two when we did the cutting layer. And again, we're gonna let it go for a while because this is gonna take a while. <laughs> And of course, this is what we end up with as a result. So you can see just how beautifully it has debossed or embossed this page. Now, it did not turn out like this initially. Some of my first tests came out a lot worse than this, and I'll show you. They came out looking like this one on the right. Now, you can barely even see the deboss on this, and Honestly, I'm not sure what went wrong. So if your projects are turning out like this and they're not turning out like this, close everything, maybe restart your computer if you need to and do it again because this is exactly what happened to me. I had four pages come out like this and when I restarted everything, it came out like this and I didn't change anything else. Just a word of advice, if this is what is happening to you, restart everything and then you will get this. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Check out this video on learning how to use the perforation blade if you haven't yet. Subscribe for more Cricut tutorials in the future and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.